Okay, audience. I don't know why I just called you audience the first time I've ever done that. Let's just go with the sub hub. Nope, that's terrible. Dan's fans, that's the worst yet. Hello, people. We're going with that. I've kind of been taking it easy on myself recently with the videos being a kind of just low hanging fruit ones. Review season three of Stranger Things, boom, piece of cake. Review the boys, easy. Binge watch a show, no problem. Reviewing your short stories, tons of fun, but I didn't really have to talk about any established franchises and put my name on a statement or a ranking that people can reference and rub my face in whenever I do eventually change my opinion because apparently I'm not allowed to be human anymore. So I decided today to go ahead and do one of these videos where I'll be doing many statements, many opinions, hard hitting hot takes and compare two very beloved fantasy series. We have the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie, the goat of Grimdark, in my opinion. Don't at me, a Song of Ice and Fire fans. If you haven't read First Law Trilogy, you're not allowed to speak on the matter. It's just the way it is. Fight me about it. It's amazing how whenever I say that the First Law Trilogy is the best Grimdark fantasy, I get a thousand comments from people saying, it can't be as good as Song of Ice and Fire. It's not as good as Game of Thrones. And then they always add like, I haven't read it, but insert just factual opinion, nothing else can be true statement. Are you kidding me? If you haven't read it, you can't say one way or the other. And by the way, most First Law people I've talked to have agreed it's better grimdark than A Song of Ice and Fire, I'm sorry. It's just, it's just the way it is. And of course you're allowed to have the other opinion, that's fine. We're very welcoming of all opinions here. I'm just stating mine. I love you. And of course, we'll be comparing the First Law trilogy against Mistborn Era 1. The original trilogy put out by one of the heaviest hitters the fantasy genre has ever seen in Brandon Sanderson. This man sells books and writes them at a rate that is just truly stupefying. How do you do it? My God. And we will be sticking to just the original trilogies themselves. So the First Law Trilogy versus Mistborn Era 1. There are stories going on after the fact here, but I will not be including them. No Mistborn Secret Histories, no Mistborn Era 2. That's a, that's a video for another day. And none of the First Law books after the original trilogy. Just taking those three into account. That being said, I put out a tweet yesterday where I asked you guys, what categories did you want to see? A lot of suggestions. The one with the most likes was treatment of female characters. I, I'm not going to give my opinion on that. Someone, someone else make that video. Don't want this comment section to be people screaming at each other. So please just, can we not this time? I make political statements every now and then, but let's just, let's keep it, let's keep it fun. Let's keep it fun. I'm having fun. But one topic that was suggested that I definitely do want to put in this video is theme. That is something I probably should have been having from the beginning. So we're now up to seven points to compare, starting with world, plot, character, magic system, themes, readability, and setting. Those are the seven topics we'll be going over when we are comparing the First Law Trilogy to the Mistborn Era 1 Trilogy. I have more to say, but without further ado, let's just jump into the first point here, character. Starting with Mistborn, Mistborn's characters bleed out of the page and the reader feels like they know them so well. Across the board, we have fans of Mistborn that just adore Vin, who is one of the best protagonists the fantasy genre has seen in a long time. But we have so many more characters to enjoy, from Ellen to the entire gang. Really, they are all well realized, their relationships deep and unique feeling to each one. Everyone has a different perspective and view of each other. It's magnificent. And the characterization prevalent in Mistborn is one of the reasons why that series struck such a chord with such a large audience and took off like it did. It's spectacular, head and shoulders above most of its peers. For that reason, it's a hell of a contender for the character point going up against any series, but it's going up against First Law. When it comes to character, First Law sets a whole new level of a bar. It's Really ridiculous to see just how well Joe Abercrombie utilized this grimdark setting and skeeving, disgusting feeling world to develop characters that are filled with such vile, vicious hatred that you still love. Everyone here ranges from like an okay person to a bad person. There's not really anyone who's just great 
all the way through and through, I, you know, it's debatable. But it's also consistent with how this world breeds the characters. And with so many of them having such well-realized and justified backstories that are communicated to the reader effectively without being heavy-handed and over-explained, really, I just need to say Glockta, and you guys should understand if you've read First Law. He is probably the best fantasy character in terms of understanding, like ability while being awful, motives just absolutely fantastic, personality, just everything makes sense. He's a fantastic, more original take on something that could have been handled like a cliche within fantasy, the fallen hero tortured turned into this awful human, but he's done so well and with such nuance in a way that I've never seen that trope done that he's he's well above anything else I've seen even in that category. It surprises me to say it, but with Joe Abercrombie's insistence on just making every character feel so real, so human, and so consistent with the world, I actually have to give this point to First Law. And this is coming from someone who's really, like, arguably one of my favorite characters of all time is Vin. I adore her arc, where she starts and what she becomes. Truly, it's one of the greatest of all time. But I think Glacta is a slightly more impressive from a technical standpoint character to write and execute. And with those two being such great reflections of the author's ability with characters as a whole, I really only need to pull from those two. If we were pulling from Stormlight, this might be slightly different because Brandon, as he's gone on as an author in his career, has improved from his already great starting point. So that might be a little bit more of a debate for this point, but I'm giving it to First Law pretty much hands down from me. Next up, we have Magic System. Mistborn wins. I should not have to explain why. If you haven't read First Law, its magic system is there, but it's more or less just background noise. It's better than some. I would even say probably of average to slightly above average, but by no means will it ever come close to one of Brandon Sanderson's meticulously made crucial to the story, so much fun to explore, brilliant, and improving everything about the series, magic systems, this is the biggest stomp of the whole video, no question, Mistborn gets this point. Next up, we have World, and this one is maybe the hardest point for me to actually give out. Mistborn's world is fantastic, beautifully written, and so, so much fun. I so love how Brandon Sanderson just siphon feeds his reader enough detail about the world. He does exposition dump, but in ways that just don't bother you. A great example is Kelsier tutoring Vin about the magic system within this world. It's handled very tactfully while being a blatant exposition dump. And the world, while these are dumps, is better as a result because it becomes so well realized. There's so much backstory, detail, nuance, and even things that aren't directly stated on the page about how the magic systems work, about how the world was built, how the political systems have evolved, the lower to upper class. There's so much there that are just kind of left for you to mine and find on your own. Brandon Sanderson is truly a master of that, and it's it's one of my favorite things he does as a writer. But when comparing it to First Law, it's extremely hard to do because First Law's world is more about the characters and how they live in it compared to Brendan Sanderson's actual care as a fantasy author to build a fantasy world that has all these elements to it. Joe Abercrombie cared much more about his world just having consistent atmosphere and be more of a setting for his characters to work and manipulate each other. So while the political dynamics are on a whole other level, things like the magic system lack, though I will say that First Law's atmosphere stomps Mistborn's atmosphere, and that's an impressive statement because Mistborn has one hell of an atmosphere. Overall, from a world perspective, because it's Brandon and his just crazy ability to build a well-realized, fully flushed out fantasy world, Mistborn's going to get the point here, though it's really close because they're both kind of edging each other out on different levels, but Brandon just has so many more levels he takes the point, Mistborn gets point three. Next, we move on to plot, which is a very interesting point to try and compare. First Law's plot is almost entirely character, motivated, and based. We are following a story that is happening because of the characters we are following having great, well-realized motives and agency, and I respect that 
immensely. Though I am reviewing this in the terms of which is the better fantasy story, which adds a slight asterisk to this point. Mistborn's plot is super duper 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 fantasy. We're following, as I previously covered, the big evil supernatural bad guy and the underdog protagonist going after them. A story trope that fantasy has had pretty much since its origins and has no signs of stopping. Mistborn does this though extraordinarily well. On the other side of things though, First Law handles its political scheming plot extremely well and I can't wholly discount it. If I'm looking at this through a fantasy lens, there is a clear winner, Mistborn, because it is doing a fantasy plot. And honestly, First Law's plot doesn't feel super fantasy, Based. Yes, there are fantasy elements like wizards and things within this world, but really no, this plot is about the who, not the what around them. For that reason, I'm going to make this point a tie. It is nearly impossible for me to declare a definitive winner here because while I find Mistborn's plot to be more grandiose and possibly more respectable in grand concept and planning out, I find the fact that First Law's plot being so driven by the characters we're following and care about to be more... Uh, impressive in certain ways and something I haven't seen nearly as often, so I can't really declare a winner here and I'm bad at my job. Next up, we have theme. Mistborn's theme is something we've certainly seen before, but again, it's a very well done exercise of these themes. The underdog message, the believe in yourself, the look, anyone can overcome anything, even if it's a borderline god. There's also a healthy dosing of destiny and mental illness mixed in to really spice it up and change it up a good amount. Next up, we have First Law's theme, a rather dark one and one we've seen explored before, but I don't think arguably this well. It's something we've heard a million times. The victor of war writes the history, etc., etc. It doesn't really matter if you're the good guy in the now, you can just make it that way as long as you come out on top. But within the fantasy genre, I don't think this idea has ever been explored as well as Joe Abercrombie did here. And this is a clear win for First Law, in my opinion. Yes, I love Brandon's, and he spiced it up a little bit, but other people have done those themes before and better. Meanwhile, Joe Abercrombie is having a theme that's been done before, but I I just don't think as well as he did, uh, once again, pulling from the characters, with characters so convincing and so somehow disturbingly charming for the reader that by the end of the book, you're just like, yes, you're right, this is true. The theme of First Law is even pretty much directly said by one of the main characters at the end of the trilogy, Baez, when he simply says, whoever wins gets to be the good guy regardless of how they did it. Next up, we have readability. And I'm sorry, First Law fans, but I find this to be an easy stomp for Mistborn because Mistborn does inherently appeal to a wider audience and is a more fun, fast-paced read. First Law is not the fastest paced book ever and with lacking and things that just do propel a reader further in it in the grand epic fight scenes and character moments you see in Mistborn that are so dramatic and so inherently just viscerally fun to read, I have to say Mistborn takes this point by a good amount. I do find First Law to be more intriguing and propelling through the pages by that standard. Wow. He's just gonna make a cameo in all my videos. I do find First Law to be more compelling in the actual plot that is happening within the page, but with the immense fun you have in Mistborn, I find it way easier to recommend to more people and the people who do pick it up, I think more often because Grimdark does turn off a lot of people, will enjoy it. And finally, we have setting. Another point that I think is difficult. There's been a few easy ones here, but just getting straight to it, I slightly prefer Mistborn's setting. Brandon Sanderson set his original Mistborn trilogy in a post apocalyptic type fantasy world where the bad guy won and everyone is now suffering under evil rule. I really loved that and I think it lent a ton to the story we see here. This setting is crucial for what Mistborn is at its heart. I do not think the same is true for First Law. You could rip this setting out of the fantasy genre entirely, I feel like, and the whole narrative not suffer that much as a result? Yes, you'd have to crucially change some things that do involve magic, but you could. Whereas the setting for Mistborn is just inherently crucial to the story, and I feel is done just as well as First Laws as a whole. I'm giving this point because of the integral need of the fantasy genre in the setting 
to Mistborn, I do believe the argument could be easier made that Mistborn's setting is more original, more fun, and more grand in many ways. But this has just been my quickie video breaking down two fantasy series I absolutely love and think everyone should read both of. If you have not read Mistborn, I might recommend starting with that, especially if you don't like Grimdark, because it's a really good introduction to fantasy. And if you've not read either of these, I can't imagine you're very well read in modern fantasy. They're both everywhere and super recommended all over the place. But this has just been my versus video of Mistborn versus First Law. Like and subscribe if you have not already. I'm going to link in the comments down below to links where you can purchase the First Law trilogy books or the Mistborn books. And if you do it through those links, it helps out the channel, gives me a cut, and costs you nothing more. I'd greatly appreciate it. Have a good one, y'all. Peace!